So today let's do a couple updates on some Milwaukee packs. The first one being this fake Milwaukee pack that I got from Amazon. This showed up in a video about six months ago. I showed the actual battery that I purchased. I thought it was interesting that they were selling at around a thousand units a month. The reviews look good on it and I shared who it was sold by. I've noticed since the video and after I have contacted them about the battery being fake, they have changed the store name on this item several times. And now it shows it's trending at over 2,000 a month. The ratings haven't changed a lot down, just a little. And we show a different seller here as well currently. And just to refresh on this, this is what the package looked like. It looked really, really close to a Milwaukee. From the outside, it was very, very hard to tell. The label looked excellent. It wasn't until we pressed the button to test the fuel gauge that we actually saw an issue. So we threw it on charge, and then I was taking time here in a video to show the lights compared to a actual 8.0 Milwaukee that I had apart, seeing how the sequence of the lights were different, which was kind of the first telltale that it was possibly a fake battery. We weighed it. We definitely saw the weight difference. This is an actual Milwaukee battery. I just had it apart, so the case is empty. The guts of the pack, typical weight for Milwaukee 8.0. I also shared in this video about the Beast, just a custom-made LiPo pack, 10 amp hour, 50C rated cells. Just wanted to see how this battery would work, and was hoping to send it to Torque Test Channel to see how it would perform, and just if it could beat out some other batteries, because they do such a great job testing at Torque Test Channel. It did show up in the video here in this thumbnail, if you're interested. And just really thankful that Torque Test Channel tested the beast as well as the fake battery up here in the top. That's actually the same as that battery we're talking about here in this video. And they also tested another one for me that I put together as well. But just really appreciate them testing it. And this is a little bit of the video at Torque Test Channel of them testing the beast. Okay. And here's chapter two meeting chapter three in our story, the beast rises again. Here it is taking on the other big boys. Nine hundred and forty beating both an HD twelve point oh, a six amp hour forge, every other battery we've ever tested with it. Good stuff. Now, is that absolutely dunking on everything ever? Well, just strap in. The beast did not come to play around. 19.8 volts. And this is an 18 volt tool. You could have a large saw using 700 watts worth of juice to cut through something and it's not even dropping below 19.5 volts. And here is the beast. One thousand six hundred and seventy two and obviously a new record. This thing just gets it. Oh, but we're not done. If you think the twelve hundred watts M18 saw sees with an HD 12 or forged battery is cool, you ain't even ready. This thing does go beast mode. Holy crap. It is a beast. 1,450 watts. For some context, our backpack of 12 amp hour 21700 batteries made 1,430 watts on the same tool. And this thing even slides into and works on M18 AC inverters. And cordless drills, forget about it. With a forge, the Gen 4 hammer drill makes 47.3 foot pounds. That's a cool tidbit for you guys up from 46. With a beast, yeah, it just broke in half. It was having none of it that day. And that's what I mean when I said, forget about it. It's sheared the hardware that holds the chuck on clean off. Didn't even get any data out of this thing. It's a pissed off octopus looking thing that may kill half your tools if you press it to its limits. We love it. We'd love Thrifty Toolshed to make one with even higher C rating lipo packs to just kill even more tools. I forgot we were even keeping score of things here and trying to learn something. Sorry about that. This is what all that sort of looks like. Can't wait to see Milwaukee's version of their own 12 amp hour forge with lipo cells. Appreciate you joining us. If you ever stumble across something that looks like this and throw it in your toolbox, 
don't be surprised if your tools start to unionize on you real quick. We see here in the test results from Torque Test Channel where the fake 8 amp hour comes in at. So 79% of what an actual 8.0 should be. We also see that the beast did very well at 114% of a forge, which was a blessing to see how well it performed. And we can't wait to see just how well the actual Milwaukee 10 or 12 amp hour forge battery they come out with next. <laughs> what do they do as well? But a lot of people are asking questions about this fake battery. And many comments are about, is it still a good value? Even though we know what we know, you know, are the sales good? Is the capacity okay? Will it hold up? So that's one reason for this video. We're going to dig deeper into it and the differences, and we see why it may not be a good value. Torque Test Channel mentioned here that it's really more worth it to do as I did with the pack that we sent in built with Molicell sales. The one that scored 85% here. At least I put good sales in it, and I beefed up the strips on it, and it did perform a little better. So if you're willing to do the work of putting it together, it's actually cheaper, and it's a better option. But just reflecting back on the teardown of the fake battery six months ago, we see here that with them side by side, the BMS or protection board is definitely very different. It's very similar to a aftermarket board, as you can see here. As we pull it apart, surprisingly, they are 21700 cells. I don't see any markings on them at this point, but we definitely see that they are not Samsung uh, 21740Ts. So we put this back together and I marked it fake to be able to keep up with it well. I put this through a capacity test and with it fully charged and discharged at five amps, it came up short and really not that surprising, but we did come in under six amp hours and not really close to eight. So again, a lot of comments are about where is it still a decent six amp hour battery for the money? because it's still fairly reasonable in price. So in this next part of the video, we put this battery through more of a heavy load test. So in a video we done recently looking at whole augers, we did some comparison and reviews on these augers and we ended up trying the Milwaukee M18 Super Hog. This gear reduced drill is a beast and we used it for a whole auger and it did put a lot of pull on the batteries. But all the batteries I pretty much used on this did very well. Even my five amp hour, even some four amp hour batteries that's older, they still ran it good, just not as long. And I also used this fake battery. Most of my eight amp hours worked the best and this battery started off okay. But we do have some video of this one giving some issues with the whole auger. And my son, Eli, did a lot of videoing on this testing that we done. He helped me with the post and pulling up some of the concrete and things of that nature. But he also caught this video here of running the fake 8 amp hour and the whole auger. And here, the hard ground is giving us a lot of trouble with this. Uh, one of the augers that didn't work that great with us in the video. And as you can see, it let the smoke out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just smoking. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a help. <laughs> so back now looking into this and seeing what happened when this battery let the smoke out. We'll take it apart. If we look at the top of the case we do see a lot of splatter. So this solder didn't just liquefy, it splattered it pretty good. So it looks like it got really hot in this area. Oh, and also this side here, even though most of the splatters on this side, you can tell this left side got pretty hot as well. As we look at the internals, the first thing we notice is the solder is removed from a lot of these joints. And our battery does flash. It blinks, letting you know it's below the threshold. It needs to be recharged. But we know we're not getting good connections here for sure. We have some solder blobs here that, yep, they're actually melted into the plastic. So there we go. It's under this little mica strip right here. Now we're starting to see where the metal got hot. So this strip right here, is super thin. If we pull this piece out, it's actually loose, and you can tell 
this metal strip got extremely red hot. So this strip goes under and all the way to the negative. So this is like your negative main bus. So more than likely the way this looks, the whole bus got really, really hot. It was probably glowing red on us. As we measure across the battery, we get around 8.5 volts. We got almost 18.4 volts across the actual cells themselves. So we go across the cells, they're probably pretty decent. They're all balanced at about 3.6. Yeah, and 3.75 for that one. That's pretty, pretty decent. We'll just go ahead and take this board off so we can take a little bit closer look underneath. Going to desolder the board. Going to fast forward through a lot of this part of the video. So just showing here what happens when these batteries are under extreme load or heavy load. So something like the Super Auger probably chainsaws, things of that nature that can really pull high currents, high demands. The 8.0 should definitely be able to take those demands. So that's just one thing we need to know is that these batteries, they may not be able to handle the heavy loads that you expect them to take. Now with a drill or impact or oscillating tools, maybe even to some degree sawzalls, these aftermarket and fake batteries probably wouldn't even be much of an issue. They would just work more like a six amp hour, sometimes maybe five amp hour battery. But just know that with heavy loads, these packs will not fare well. As we take the board off, we do see this negative bus bar here. It is extremely thin. Here's the positive. It's pretty thin as well, but it's not nearly as long a run as the negative rail or bus. So yeah, this is tremendously thinner than the actual Milwaukee board. And to be honest, this is even thinner than some of the aftermarket boards I've bought in the past. But we see just how hot this strip has gotten enough to not only melt the top of the battery holder, it also desoldered the connections really close to it on the board. Just see how thin that is on the positive here. That strip is really thin, so definitely beware of that. That got really, really toasty, really, really fast. So I definitely want to thank Torque Test Channel for doing the testing on these batteries today. It was such a blessing to have them tested, and um, the, the beast performed very well. And I really appreciate them taking the time to also test this fake and the 8 amp hour that I put together with Molosel batteries with the aftermarket kit. You know, just to see where the performance lands, you know, just a true test of how they perform. I'll have a link down in the video description of Torque Test Channel's video on the Beast and the Fake Battery, if you're interested. So I hope you did enjoy this update video on these M18 batteries. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have a link down in the video description for some of the tools and interesting items that I find helpful on my workbench. So any link you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.